Do not be fooled by this house slap down on bonuses. It's a Trojan horse. And when I tell you what they could really be up to, you'll discover it is something else. Maybe a Trojan horse's ass. Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavito, and here's the deal. It's a cookbook. And we're on the menu. All of us are line by line, ingredient by ingredient, recipe for going after the rich. First, by saying you're going after rich fools. You know, the kind who take bonuses for a job not at all well done. Fools like those guys at AIG who had the temerity to run with a bonus for essentially running the company into the ground. Who'd be against whacking those guys, right? But back to my cookbook theme. This bonus tax is really just an appetizer. Because if you think Washington uh, going to all of this trouble to zero in on the relative morsels of TARP-funded losers, then you're a loser. In fact, you're likely a target, and here's why. Reading the language of this bill, who's to stop this 90% tax on just TARP guys who screw up? How about guys who deal with TARP guys who screw up, or guys who might deal with TARP guys who screw up, or guys who might deal with TARP guys who might screw up? You see my point? It's a messy meal. And what better time to be cooking up such nonsense than when all the ingredients are there? Rage at the rich, payback time for the rich, have at it at the rich, and they are. Now, trust me, my friends, this is just the opening salad salvo, if you're following me. And the main course hasn't even arrived because Washington is hungry, and guess who is on the plate? So, is this really about AIG on the menu or down the road us? Let's ask Minnesota Democrat Jim Oberstar. Congressman, I'm worried. What's going on here? Well, don't be worried. Uh, this is an outrage over the greed on uh, behalf of a few people, not on Wall Street, not on all of the uh, financial sector, not on people who uh, do their uh, business properly and appropriately, have a sense of moral responsibility, uh, but on, on these excesses. And in the uh, initial TARP legislation last fall, the Congress prohibited golden parachutes for those Com executives of those companies that received federal assistance funding. We well, didn't shouldn't anticipate you stop, shouldn't you this stop sort of the thing. bonuses? Yeah, there was oversight there. There was a means by which to see whether they would you do something like this. And Congress, I know you guys were swearing to me on a stack of Bibles after you found out about the AIG weekend retreat with the massages and all of that, that it wouldn't happen again, that there'd be oversight. So it sounds to me that you guys are trying to you know, fix up and, and, you know, cozy up the barn after the animals have already left. You should have dealt with it prior. We did in the House. The House uh, uh, bill, uh, the uh, American Recovery Act, had language uh, that uh, restricted these kinds of payouts to executives. But when the bill was in conference, Treasury Department made probably a an appropriate constitutional call saying this would be in the nature of an ex post facto law prohibiting such bonuses under prior agreed to signed contracts. And so the language was removed and other uh, weaker language substituted for it. Uh, the action today was to uh, uh, impose a tax on those excesses since we can't roll it back. Uh, and and be in and doing so be you know, in the violation language, of the constitution. I, I read the language on this thing, Congressman. And while it, its its genesis was this AIG abuse, and I'm all with you, Congressman, that you know you got guys accepting bonuses who, who dragged a company into the ground. They shouldn't get bonuses. You're quite right, uh, but. It should have been, as I argued at the outset, and I think you agreed, done beforehand. Nevertheless, now I'm worried that given this language about whether you have deal in TARP funds, that you shouldn't be taking bonuses, and that it's possible that this extends to those who deal with TARP-funded concerns, that it extends that. Who's to say that this goes way beyond just this, this tiny criminal crowd to a much larger okay. crowd, and this isn't part of a broader agenda to... to to, to stick it to the rich. No, there is no broader agenda. This is a very clear, narrow, targeted, focused uh, attempt to recover those excess bonuses from only these people at this particular company who uh, well, what about failed Freddie Mac the and moral Fannie Mae? Okay, responsibility well, fine, fine. So Freddie test. Mac and Fannie Mae, now we know those guys are getting bonuses. This apply to them as well? This language does not apply to them. We'll have to uh, craft, if that becomes an issue, 
additional language dealing with Freddie Mac that avoids the constitutional responsibility uh, not to impose an ex post facto law. So we have to be constitutional. We also have to expect from the private sector a sense of moral responsibility uh, to understand well, that very they've passed lately, the Lately, a lot of them haven't provided that moral example. You're right. I know you've been a critic of that. So I'm wondering now, if you're saying this is for IG and it doesn't apply to Fannie and Freddie, then it sounds to me like your rage is very selective, Congressman. Well, it's very targeted to this particular situation, but it has raised the, uh, this AIG situation has raised the visibility of other companies, uh, including Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, that uh, receive taxpayer funds and then use those funds in, in an inappropriate, perhaps immoral, or perhaps illegal way. Right. But don't uh, you find it we odd, We have to be though, very focused. I, I know what you're saying, but... I know I'm not dismissing these 165 million bonuses. I think they were a mistake and even criminal. But they're a very small percentage of the, you know, the 179 billion or something that AIG has gotten, right? And, and, and yes. you're making a big deal of it, as is your want, and you're right. But when, when, when people were jumping ugly on Congress for making a, you know, a, a big deal of the 7.7 .7 billion in pork and earmarks in that spending bill, uh, that was dismissed as making a big deal out of nothing. Yet that was an arguably much bigger number. There, was, there were no earmarks in the American Recovery Act. In the 1978 financial support for Chrysler, uh, which I voted on, uh, Congress imposed on the, on the auto workers' unions a requirement to scale back their pay, their benefits, and to use their retirement funds. No, 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 you're not getting my question. My qu no, 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 I know, Congressman. Wait a while. Uh, wait a while. This is important because we did make an imposition on the workers at that time to use their I'm retirement funds. I'm talking about the spending bill. You're right. You're right. I'm talking the about the spending bill. It, we yeah. were, we, everyone was well, jumping you, you ugly in Congress. You, you, jumped, you jumped from the American Recovery Act to the omnibus bill. Those are two separate issues. No, I didn't mention the American Recovery Act at all. I talked about the spending bill. I was talking bill. about the American I talk, Recovery I know, Act. That's I'm the not, provision I'm not. That I'm talking have. about the spending bill where you guys said we were making a big deal out of the pork and waste in that, the total close to $8 billion. This abuse here with the bonuses, which you're quite right, is abusive, is $165 million. This is a big deal. That was it. Does it jibe? The uh, individual designations of funding, constituent-inspired initiatives in the omnibus bill are a totally separate issue. They do not increase the overall dollar amount. They do not go to any individual. They don't go to any member of Congress. They are for public purposes. They are all subject to scrutiny. These bonuses were paid out not subject to public scrutiny, but subject to a prior a contractual agreement by the um, uh, workers That you should have been aware AIG. of. That you should have been aware of, right? Because it yes, was all there we, in the 10Q. Uh, and that we attempted to deal with with right. specific language in the House passed bill, gotcha. but which Treasury said would be unconstitutional. All right. Uh, Congressman, thank you. We'll see where this goes. You're welcome. Good to talk with you. All right. Well, as unappetizing as some of these long-term tax implications might be, former Treasury Secretary.